Greetings, this is Sarah Rushlow on behalf of Baker Hunt's Art and Cultural Center here to bring you another fun and exciting art tutorial. Today we're going to do some watercolor and we're going to use painter's tape to do it to make to make a resist to do a resist technique. So for so first things first, you want to gather your materials. Now for what you need, you're going to need some watercolors, a set of watercolors, some watercolor pencils, and then some a water container, water, paintbrush, and some watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, that's all right. Uh, just try to find the most absorbent piece of paper that you have. And let's get started. So go ahead and take your painter's tape, peel a strip off, and you're going to tape over your, you're going to tape your paper. That, this tape is going to keep paint from getting on the paper. So when you pull up the tape at the end, you're going to have a white stripe on your painting. Now, I'm doing a snowy wood scene, but you can make all sorts of things with this. Uh, you can do an abstract painting. You can do squares and shapes for like a geometric abstraction. Really up to you. Never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I really missed the snow this year, so I am going to do a snowscape. So now that I've taped off those, now that I've taped off those areas, I'm put one more tree in there for luck. I'm gonna get my paintbrush. I'm gonna get my paint. I wanna use like a I wanna use a dark blue. And see I'm painting over the edge of those pieces of tape. You want to make sure the tape is stuck to the to the watercolor paper. And then I can add a darker blue if I want. Moving kind of fast. So you wait until that dries a little bit. Uh, if you haven't already, please go and follow us on our website or on Instagram or Facebook at hashtag Baker Hunt. quick technique. If you want to try and keep your water a little cleaner, before you actually put your brush in your water, when your brush still has paint on it, you just wipe it off on a paper towel or a cloth. See? Get most of it out to begin with and see how that doesn't really change your watercolor that much because you've already cleaned a lot of the paint out and now it's still relatively clean. So, I'm going to wait till it dries. A little bit more. Next thing I'm going to do is draw some bark and some branches. Now, I can use a thin paintbrush to do this. Or I can use a watercolor pencil. So these are water watercolor pencils are pencils that will uh, blur when you draw when you paint over them with water. And there's a lot of uses for them. But one thing you can do with them is in your watercolor painting, you can draw harder lines on top of your watercolor once it's dry. 
and you can keep it sharp or you can go over it again with some water. But I want to go and I want to take my brush and I'm going to I want to make some aspen trees. So I'm going to just draw some brown squiggly lines. Cuz aspen has those interesting dark brown almost slashes in their bark. Tend to be more to one side or the other, so. There we go. See, just squiggly lines. And they have some variety. Some of them have almost, it looks like they got eyes or something. Alright, so there you go. Now, I go back in with my water. See how that leaves some texture, but it makes it a little smoother. There's one use for this. That's okay if not everything's perfect. Kind of makes it a little more interesting if it isn't. As always, if you don't have any of these materials, um, just use what's at your hand at your house. Certainly don't want you rushing out to buy things. As always, uh, stay safe and stay creative. All right. Now the other option you have, if you don't want to blur those lines, is you can just leave them alone. And you can do things like draw twigs. You can also draw through water. Do something else there. Do another, get another type of texture. There we go. Then I'm going to take my pencil here. Now I want to draw a little cardinal. Draw a cardinal I'd like to draw. I draw a big circle for its body. A little circle on top like a little snowman, cardinal snowman. A little triangle in the back for his little tail. And they have like a very orange beak. Can't forget that crest. Crest is just a little smidgen of a triangle at the top of their head. And then they have that, that little mask, a little bib. So I'm going to go over. I don't have black, so I'm just using a real dark blue because it looks like black from there. And uh, if I want to, I can paint that in or I can leave it as is. If I want to, I can get some water again, get a smaller brush, and just paint his body and smooth that out if I want. Like I said, I kind of missed the snow this year. I can't believe I can say that. I, I can finally say that. Um, so I think I want to add, just for, some, for fun, I, I think I want to add some some snow. So I'm going to show you a little extra technique here. Something extra today. And this is called, this is splatter paint painting. So I'm make, getting my brush nice and wet. Then I am either taking my finger or taking another brush and just tapping like lightly. Nice thing about this is this is watercolor, so it will clean it will clean up nicely. Don't think I would want to do that with don't do this with acrylics unless you're in an area unless you're in an area that you don't mind getting messy and never having the acrylics come out. Yeah, I suggest with this 
Uh, you can wear some clothes you don't care about so much, too. And let's see what the back. Okay. And all you have to do now is wait, and let it dry, let everything dry. And there you have. painting of a snowscape with aspen trees and a cardinal. All right, well, this has been Sarah Rushlow on behalf of Baker Hunt Art and Cultural Center. See you next time.